a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a rock. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very profound. Expanding reality. Tyler Hansen, welcome to the show here. You are the fittest flat earther, and I don't know if that's an accurate thing or a challenge, but either way, I love it. I love what you're doing. You have some fascinating videos. I found you on TikTok and Instagram, which will both be located down in the show description. You guys know how this works. Tyler, inviting you to the show here. Will you please tell our audience just a little bit more about you, man? Explain this fittest flat, er flat earther thing that you yeah, got going on there. Absolutely. Um, well, I'm uh, 43 years old, and I think for the first 42 years of my life, um, I was pretty blind to a lot of things. Um, I'm a teacher. I grew up in a pretty um, well-off community, a northern suburb of Chicago, um, where reality is uh, money and intelligence and the physical world. So even though I didn't, uh, you know, I... I didn't partake in a lot of that. You know, I came from a, a single mother household and I wasn't, I didn't have a car like every one of my other friends growing up and, and things like that. So, you know, I, I, I knew I lived in that type of atmosphere, but I never considered myself, uh, you know, snooty or anything like that. I always had an open mind, always was a hard worker. And for 42 years, I thought the physical world we lived in was really all there was. Um, you know, if someone were to ask me if I believed in God, you know, I, I did grow up in a Christian Catholic family, but it's like Irish Catholic when you go to church and it was for a funeral for a wedding. And uh, if someone a year ago would ask me if I believed in God, I would have probably said yes, but it would have been a yes. And maybe 50 percent we die and get buried and that's it. And the other 50 percent was uh, there could be something. And uh in the past year, my reality has completely changed. I have experienced um, a ton of paranormal, spiritual, UFO, um, just a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that has changed my world and um, caused me the past six or seven months to just like dive into truth and find, get to the uh, clearest vision of what truth is to me versus what I was told truth was for most of my life. This truth journey, man, it's a wild one that we talk about. It's uh, it's interesting. I want to run a concept by you. I've talked about it a bunch on the show. It's just my personal philosophy of what's occurring as far as I can honestly speak to it from my perspective is, is that truth is so temporary. And it seems that uh, what we're experiencing here is just this series of temporary truths where one thing that we feel so certain and strong about holds us on enough to really be empowered or embodied. I get the psychological aspect of having a truth. Um, and then perhaps, but I feel that, you know, this is kind of my question to you. Do you feel that the, do you feel that that's a thing, that temporary truths exist and that what you know now will change in the future based off new information? 100%, um, with the caveat is on my beginning kind of truth voyage, I went down these avenues and these rabbit holes and things with, um, something, for example, like the moon. I thought I had this truth of the moon that it was uh, basically a giant space station. And like, I was convinced. It's so much and, fun. I get yeah. it. I get and, it. Um, and I had these different things involved with that, with what I thought the things in the sky I was seeing were with things like aliens and reptilians. And a lot of that has changed. And once I came upon the flat earth truth, that took like the final you know, blinders off. And I, I'm always trying to learn and I'm always trying to get to the bottom of truth. But since I have come across flat earth and that truth, there's nothing I've said need, needed to go back and say, I was wrong about that. Now, am I learning new things a lot? Yes, but it's never, 
I'm never going back and saying, uh, I'm, I was wrong. The moon isn't a space station, you know, um, since the flat earth journey or since that moment I have learned about flat earth, I, there's not a time where I'm going back and I'm like, I was wrong about that. So, uh, I'm still open and have an open mind and want to learn more and keep expanding what truth and reality is, but I haven't had to take anything back. So it, it's like a yes and no to that, that question, I guess. Yeah. And then even in all the flat earth truths, what if you find out that it's really a dimensional realm or that you're a brain in a vat and that it simulates that so you would have perceived it that way, though not necessarily by definition, it is a flat earth. Does that make sense? It does. Um, but part of what flat earth did to me was um, the best way I can relate it is like the story of Santa Claus. When, when you learn as a child that Santa Claus was Santa Claus was a lie. Um, it kind of like the blinders are off and you don't go back to believing in Santa Claus. And there's a lot of things that flat earth does with that, where it takes the blinders off and you're like, okay, there was intentional deceit. You know, for example, like you find, if you find presents in the closet as a kid and you're, you're like, mom, why are there Christmas presents in here? And you're like, Oh, those are for someone else. Or, you know, like once you figure out what the lie is and what, what the intention of the lie is, it doesn't allow you to be fooled in that direction again, if that makes sense. Absolutely does. And to your analogy, Santa is a beautiful one because you find out that, yes, you have been lied to about the about Santa in general as the concept. But whenever you get out of that, you're only told that Santa's not real and that it's been mom and dad. But when you kind of go as an adult, then phase three or a new temporary truth that you come up against, because this is based on historical fact, right, or written his story, is, is that Santa Claus is actually much more interesting because then as an adult, you find out that it's related to the Amanita muscaria mushroom. And then it's like a whole new level to having fun with this place, you know? And I feel like that that's what temporary truths allow you. They allow you this freedom from what was, but then also the ability to expand into new things with new information. And yeah, like you said, build on that. So the fact that Santa isn't real from a child's perspective as it was being presented to you is absolutely true. But then from there, it builds on it from further knowledge with it. It was actually something super dope having to do with mushrooms and psychedelics and dope shit in Siberia, right? So it's this fascinating sort of build upon that, uh, that like, you're, like you're talking about, that you're experiencing, man, which is badass. Okay, so you mentioned the fucking moon, bro. Yeah. What's the moon, dude? What do you think the moon is, rather? That's how you ask that question. Okay. Um, well, so before... You know, I talked about how I, you know, I was potentially 50, 50 God, God or not. And, um, I was never a Bible guy, never like I, I was on a podcast the other day and I, I joked, I was like, literally, I probably the first, the only time I ever touched a Bible, the first 42 years of my life was if it was on a church pew and I was at a funeral and I was moving it out of my way. Like <laughs> I was, I just, rolling you know, I papers. Thought, <laughs> they make great rolling papers too. If you're in a pinch, I thought it was, uh, you know, a lot of uh, parables, a lot of figurative speech, and never did I think that it was literal until I had this view and this this vision of what the world was, and I already had it and hadn't compared it to the Bible at all. And then I pick up the Bible, and page one of the Bible starts talking about the luminaries in the sky and the firmament and all these things. So I am I have yet to come across something that contradicts what I believe with lining up with the Bible. So to me, the moon is definitely not something physical that you can send astronauts on to, to land on. I believe it's either some sort of reflection of our realm or plasma. I definitely think it could even potentially be holographic in nature, but I, you know, there are a lot of things I believe about it. What I would say I know is that it's not a giant, dusty space rock that is reflecting the sun's light at us. That's, I would say, I know that. <laughs> well, you know yeah. that from the measurements of the light that comes off of it, right? It's colder yeah. than, yes, exactly. than it is in shadow, the light coming off of it. So already yeah. it's a, it's illuminating and producing its own light as well as how it's viewed through a, uh, the ma rays or the uh, black parts at night are then blue in the day. So it's almost like it's transparent in that way. Yeah, exactly. And, um, even the way, you know, like you can look at how light reflects off of sand or things like that. Like the, we would not get that, that dense or that bright of light from something ref from dusty sand reflecting 
the sun's rays from 93 million miles away. Well, and how was any of the moon pictures visible if taken at all because of the damn glare that was shown down from it, right? Wouldn't they be just bombarded yeah. as if they were standing on a mirror reflecting everything back? It's so bright. Yeah, exactly. The inverse, um, what is it? The law of missing it. The inverse law of light says there's something to it where, you know, depending on the distance you get, you know, the way we see the moon, if you're on it, you would literally be just blinded. There wouldn't yeah. be any chance to see. <laughs> They'd have to send Stevie Wonder up there, you know, just to navigate the <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. What a wild concept, though. I love the moon. I love it. It gets more fun. See, this is what I'm talking about. You find out that it's not what they said it was, but man, it, it gets so much more fun after that. Because even in the space model, like you said, the Alex Coyer work with the hollow moon and that it was a planetoid brought here and all that stuff. And that sort of built on the idea that ancient cultures said that there was a time before the moon. But again, it doesn't it doesn't presuppose that space is real just because of that. It just means that there wasn't a visible thing in the sky called the moon uh, a while ago. And then all of a sudden that there was, it doesn't mean that it was brought here physically, maybe projected, like you said, it's just interesting, yeah, and, man. Yeah. And I, I mean, I 100% thought for sure, like I was, I went down that rabbit hole and I saw, saw things that said the moon wasn't here. And you know, it, it, if it wasn't here in ancient, you know, writings or ancient, even, um, hieroglyphics, things like that, then, where to come from. So I, I was, I was deceived down that rabbit hole of it is for sure a giant spacecraft <laughs> brought the earth. Yeah. Which again, presupposes that the space model is real, which is what I think those type of, um, rabbit holes are all about. Yes. They're fun as shit, but again, it presupposes uh, all of it builds on that model. Same. And I've talked about this as well. The additional Apollo missions. Have you heard about that? The 18 through 20? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 20, 17 through 20, something like that. Yeah, and planet, uh, what was the one, planet Sir Serpo or something like that? Yeah, Project Serpo. I love that yep. one. That's fun yep, too, yep. right? They went out there, yeah. and then I've got a book called The Thaluba Prophecy. Um, fun shit, you know, and I love it. But again, all of it presupposes that one thing, that it's based on this model that the astronomers and mainstream science have been, science with a dollar sign, not an S, have been selling us, right? Yes, exactly. So what about UFOs? Um. Well, we, we can get into that. So um, what led to my truth journey? And, um, I, you know, I shouldn't say that 42 years I wasn't, um, that I was just kind of closed off to it. I knew about 9-11 many, many years ago. Um, I've always had, I've always been health and nutrition conscious. So I've kind of like, like, what's the deal with the food pyramid? So I've, my eyes have been open, but they weren't, I never had this uh, desire to seek truth until, uh, probably about May last year. And I think what led me on this was, it sounds silly, but I'm a dog dad. I don't have any kids of my own. My dog was 15 years old. He was on his way out. I'm sure as a way to cope with that, you know, it wasn't a conscious decision, but I was diving down the rabbit holes of uh, near-death experiences. And I think I just was trying to see, like, is there more to this world? Because I was just like a believer of science and, and all that. And that kind of led me on the alien rabbit hole. And I just, I was like, it's gotta be here. There's UFOs, the government's hiding it. Um, they're aliens. I'm going to prove this to myself once and for all. So started digging into that. That led me to, um, Dr. Stephen Greer's stuff with the CE5. Are you familiar with that? Yes, sir. Um, so I tried, I downloaded the app. I was very skeptical. I'm like, I'm going to give this a try. But like, you know, I watched a lot of different videos on how people would capture stuff in the sky. And I tried to have an open mind to it, but still skeptical. So I tried it, you know, for anyone uh, of the listeners that don't know, it's basically you go through a meditation and there's some frequencies and tones and things that kind of are supposedly um, supposed to kind of let them know your location and things like that. Tried it. Gave it my all, nothing happened. Um, probably within a couple weeks, I came in across another woman um, who was really big into the um, UFO and the Galactic Federation and astral travel, remote viewing, stuff like that. And, and she gave something, it was a mantra that I don't even think I want to share it because I don't want people to go down and do it. But it was a mantra that would basically... 
and to clear your mind of this reptilian DNA that we supposedly have. So I had this mantra, I had the Stephen Greer stuff, and I started just really believing that I could call things to me in the sky. And uh, lo and behold, I, I literally started doing that. Um, first time was um, I was outdoors and just was like focused and speaking to the sky, show me something and saying this mantra. And in the distance, this, you know, I'm looking at it and I can't tell what it is, and but it's coming right at me. It's not, and I'm like, that's not a helicopter. It's not a plane. It's not a bird. It's nothing I've seen. It's pulsing. I don't have my phone on me. It was, I was actually at school when this happened. Um, I'm a teacher. I don't know if I even got into that, but I was out, I'm, a PE teacher is outside at school. It didn't have my phone on me. So trying to keep an eye on it. I'm like, I got to get this record it just because I'm like, people are going to just think I'm insane if I'm looking at this and I have no proof. So I'm trying to keep an eye on it. Probably a minute goes by. It's still coming at me because it was in the distance and it gets, cl it's close. And as soon as I grab my phone to get it on film, it doesn't disappear, but it goes from going at me to just immediately takes a right turn. Um, I got it on film. It looks like a, an orb of pulsing light. Um, and at the time, you know, I 100% thought it was ETs that, that I tell or that I communicated with them telepathically. And I was like, nobody's going to believe me, but I have stuff on film. So I was like, at least happy I had that. Um, two more times I did that and they came to me in orbs of light. They were um, pretty high in the sky, but they were literally circling me orbs of light and one came one was much lower and almost looked like he was checking me out and zoomed by like maybe 20 feet above my head instead of the hundreds of feet these were above and got that on film. And then uh, I did it a third time. And then the third one I didn't get on film, but then the fourth one I did it. The last time I did it was around the time I had started, started to, I was having some, you know, I was noticing there's more to this world than just the physical. I was starting to be open to the supernatural, to the spiritual world. Um, but like my family wasn't really believing things I was saying. I was starting to be open to God. So this last time I spoke directly to God and I was like, um, I was on a walk and I was on, it was a totally overcast day. I'm on this path by myself. And I closed my eyes and I'm walking and I said, God, please show me something that I can, one, know you're real and two, like have evidence to show people that I'm not crazy. And I'm walking and my eyes are closed. And it, I kid you not, it's like, I mean, it was a Chicago, like, you know, April or May day and it's so cloudy and dark and it, with my eyes closed, it seems like someone came and shined a flashlight, like right in my eyes. And I opened my eyes and, the only beam of light in the entire view of my vision, you know, like the entire peripheral is a cloud or a hole in the clouds opened up and it's shining directly at me. It almost looked like out of a movie where you see like a UFO beam light down on someone and they're getting beamed up. Um, but it wasn't, it, it was sunlight coming through, but within that hole of the clouds came another, unidentified flying object but this one was different the other ones were orbs of light this one was like i would say it was like three kind of like it was like a tripod of orbs like this here and here but all translucent and it was just like nothing i'd ever seen before i pull out my phone as soon as i go to record that one clouds close up and gone so um at the time i believe that all to be ufo et in nature and since then i truly believe it is much more um spiritual either demonic um because i've had around that time i started having some demonic attacks and sleep paralysis so i think it's demonic or you know just spiritual so maybe not the bad guys but maybe some some uh angelic type things as well but i it, i no longer think it has anything to do with uh, extraterrestrials coming from other planets or galaxies. So I know that was a lot and I will let you go at it. Any questions you might have.
it was perfect. And I'm grateful that you explained things <laughs> as thoroughly and as well as you did. You're eloquent, brother. And th that was awesome. Well stated. Thank you. Thank and you. it's interesting, too, though, that you note that you did meditate and have communication with something. And, you know, I'd invite you to share that mantra. But if you feel that it's not apt or you feel that after exploring that, it's not valuable for people and they want to reach out to you independently, you change your mind. That's fine. But we're not going to push you to do so on this on the yeah, show here. No. But I, I don't you know, what? I'll, I'll share it. Um, I just um, just caution the audience. You know, I thought it was a harmless thing. I thought it was a. um just a mantra that, and I'm not saying the mantra is the cause, but that added with other things and maybe me just being open to it. Um, but it was simply, I choose to disengage my reptilian DNA. So I have full sovereignty over every aspect of my reality. And I would just say that. And I had other things happening around that time when I started to do that too, like um, clairvoyant things, like where I'd go to a casino and be like, 33 is going to hit on the roulette wheel or tell a, guy asked me next to me like what number to bet on and i had 28 in my head all day from a vision i had and then he won thousands of dollars so some weird things were happening around the time i was using that and but at the same time also the demonic attacks which i do not wish on anyone so um just word of caution that's all do you mind sharing those uh now that you've given us the keys to unlock what you said you can experience with that Let's hear the um, side effects. You know how in a uh, drug commercial, which only aired in New Zealand and America, by the way, did you know that? Illegal in What's all that? other countries. Drug commercials, pharmaceutical oh. commercials advertised to the public. Illegal in every other country except uh, USA and New Zealand. I think that's, uh, I didn't know that. That's very similar to what I know or what I've heard about uh, using propaganda against your own country, too, that sure. it is uh, legalized in the U.S. And I, I don't think a lot of other places. Yeah. Ed Edward Bernays' nephew owns Netflix. Yeah, uh, exactly. To that point, what I'm saying is, is that uh, then now we can go a uh, little deeper with that. So let's hear the side effects of this event, please. List those off for us. Um. Which event? Just the the sightings? The demonic. The, so after you okay. said that thing, the side effects from the fun part of like seeing it and going, oh, okay, that was interesting. Yeah, I got something on yeah. camera. Okay, something's a little verified. And then you had some shit times out of it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. there was a potato chip that claimed to have anal leakage one time. So what is the anal leakage, leakage equivalent to the take on that you did? Was that the uh, the Dorito ones when I they think came out? The wow with the chips. They came out. Oh, yeah. uh, I with the Oleen or Alistra. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was it. Yeah. The yeah. Alistra, Not around right. anymore, I don't think. They, no, no. Now you get your anal leakage from Chipotle. <laughs> Please, sir. Um, all right. Well, so, you know, I've had dreams my whole life. I've remembered dreams. I've had nightmares my whole life. And they were all, I would wake up and some felt real, some didn't. But like, there was never a. There's never a time where I didn't wake up and say that was a dream. And um, around the time I was waking up to just the true nature of this place or the truer nature of this place than what I used to think, you know, I used to think just physical place. We came from uh, monkeys evolved from billions of years ago. And uh, when I was waking up to flat earth and just spirituality, um, I I knew that there was something else here. Um, you know, at the time I thought it was, you know, reptilian beings or, but like, I knew there was something else here. And in this dream experience, I was, and I should say this too, is I, I've come across some pretty strong evidence to me that there is you know, people talk about shapeshifters and things like that. And I, I've come across some pretty strong evidence that I do think that exists, whether it's technology driven, well, they, whether they have super high tech that can literally cloak them in holographic technology to not see their true form, or whether it is chameleon in nature where they can literally just blend in. I think that exists. So, and I was aware of that at the time. So anyway, in this dream experience, I'm falling through darkness. Like it literally feels like it literally felt like I was in another dimension, just falling through darkness. And I am wrestling with a, a shadow creature a being with no face, but I'm clawing at its face, like trying to like, kind of, I was trying to get him to expose himself. Like, are you a reptilian? Are you a demon? Like, what are you? I like, I just had this need to know and I'm ripping at his face 
and I wake up and I am in bed with my wife. It's probably three or four in the morning and I am frozen stiff, but fully aware, fully conscious. All, only thing I can do is like move my eyes from like side to side and look, but can't move a muscle. I tried to call out for my wife because I've never experienced anything like this. I literally tried to yell and there wasn't even a murmur. It wasn't even like, Ooh, it was just dead. And, uh, probably four or five seconds later, it literally felt like my soul got like shot back into my body and then I could move and I could speak. I told my wife about it and she was kind of like, go back to bed. It was a dream. Um, but I knew it wasn't, you know, it was something I had never experienced before. Um, I, I went back to bed just cause I was like, I don't know what to do, but I, it was three in the morning. So I was like, I'm going to just gather every bit of gratitude and love and everything I can. So I just like thought about everyone I loved and God and just tried to get this like good vibrations going to go back to bed. And then I, I went back to a place that seemed very not dreamlike. It was too real. And I'm in this just like endless blue, clear water, like almost like flying, but it's in water. So I'm kind of swimming and it's like, it was the most like magical, surreal experience ever, but the complete opposite of the fear I had in the first one. Um, and I woke up again, but this time, um, I was, I it was lucid dreaming a little because in my mind I'm in this water and I'm like, Oh, I'm in water, but I know like my body is back in my bed. But if I'm in water, like maybe my body's not knowing to breathe. So I just had like this little moment of worry in my dream state and it snapped me back to being conscious in my bed again. The same thing. I had sleep paralysis again, but it was, there was no fear. I just had this like feeling of like love and warmth in me. But then again, it felt like five seconds later, it literally felt like my soul like smacked back into my body, but totally different than, you know, a half hour earlier. And, uh, you know, I had never heard of sleep paralysis. I have never experienced it. And I have since then again, but, you know, upon researching it and seeing that it is a common thing that happens to people as they're kind of having a spiritual awakening and relating it to demonic attacks, like that's what I felt like I experienced. And that first one was some sort of alternate realm or dimension or something literally wrestling with a demon of some kind. Do you practice out of body experiences or astral travel? I was, um, I don't anymore. I was, I've kind of, um, as I become a Christian and more of a believer in the Bible, I, I really don't choose to dabble in that stuff anymore, but I was for sure trying to, I really felt like I was starting to lucid dream a lot and starting to, like, I was confident I was going to be able to remote view and astral travel and those that experience kind of, I don't want to say scared me off of it, but the negative experience I had with that on top of becoming um, a believer in the Bible just has kind of steered me away from it. Do, have you ever done psychedelics? No. Okay. Nope. A similar experiences are reported in both instances, which is why this is interesting. Um, I am curious with your, uh, okay, so we had a guy named Michael Cameron on the show. He has got PTSD from some very traumatic experiences his entire life, and it continues to this day. Like when we spoke with him, he was six months out of his last experience, and it's all my lab now and crazy shit, right? Yeah. So uh, when it, whenever you talk about like, horrific things that happen to people like this it's like that they have contracts or agreements with some sort of demon or entity mm -hmm. <clears throat> now do you feel like that that was something that you brought upon yourself by calling the ufo in yeah i do now for sure like i think i opened i think i opened up basically i think i put a target on my back you know like i think i communicated with some demonic forces in nature and i think you know i i part of me really thinks they leave people alone that don't have a concept that we're living in a spiritual world. And, uh, you know, I think because if you were to, you know, if there's a demonic attack of someone who isn't in the knowledge, it kind of lets them know like, Hey, there's more to this world. And, you know, I, I don't think 
I think a lot of the deception in the world, um, even going down to like living on a globe, I think has to do with hiding the true nature of living in God's creation and living in a spiritual realm. Um, so yeah, I, I think I for sure invited it in unintentionally. And it's interesting that you say whenever you got <clears throat> after your uh, dream and those events are, yes, juxtaposed. You have one that's horrific and, and awful, and then that can be interpreted like you were just wrestling yourself, right, through to some people. And yeah. maybe an archon that's running this whole damn thing. Who knows? But then the other one, nice. You know, so it received energy from you in two different ways, right? This whatever it was, if, if an energy component is what's going on here it received it in a shit horrible way but that falling wrestling dream and then it gave you a little something like a little hey thanks here's a towel wipe up kind of a thing afterwards right yeah and it's yeah. interesting too whenever uh you talked about sleep sleep paralysis because what michael was talking about on this how he explained it uh, made a lot of sense because of his astral travel this is his perspective because of his astral travel work he talked about that sometimes there's a delay and not only getting out of your body, but back into your body. And that's what true sleep paralysis is, that it can yeah. be brought upon by some entities or something like that. But essentially, it's those that practice out-of-body experiences pretty much regularly or astral travel. They sort of experience this more sleep paralysis than other folk like, like me or something, right? Because I don't do either. So it's that momentary like, oh, shit, I can't move. But your soul's just like... I don't know, give him one more kiss goodbye, right? And then it'll be yeah. here in just a second. And then you're able to animate. So, but it was interesting that you had two different experiences at it. One, you had the confidence that your body would return to function because you'd already gone through it. Um, kind of like having a bad trip and then taking it again just to have a good trip. But then also you had the um, nicer experience, which then brought you into more confidence with it that it wasn't that bad of a thing. So yeah, right. in that experience though, you had two completely different um, types of experience there, but you still feel that it was uh, demonic in nature and like not positive at all. Um, I think we probably have a little bit of ability to control it, and I just don't know if I'm, um, you know, I'm just me. I think uh, we all have some pretty extraordinary powers that we're not told about, and that you know, I think some of us can dive into more than others, and I I think I've tapped into that a little the past year. But um, I don't know, I, I'm so curious to try more because I really think I have an ability to do it. But I just, um, you know, JC says not to dabble in that stuff. So I, I'm uh, surprised if I heard myself saying that a year ago, I would have probably laughed myself off. But um, I don't know, I just really try to fo follow a lot of what the Bible says, if, you know, if not all. Well, listen to your homeboy, man. I like your uh, yeah. conviction. I yeah, tell you what, exactly. I am uber curious about dogs and mainstreams and dogs in the star. So a dog parent as well. We have a new rescue, Yokai. Uh, she's amazing. A little healer Australian Kelpie mix. Oh, cool. Uh, we have a huge, uh, like, 12-year-old husky mix running around here. Somewhere we are also uh, animal folks. So please awesome. tell, I, I have to uh, hear about this, about the dogs. Yeah. Um, man, there's... Um... I can get into it pretty deep, um, but I, I guess let me give the short of it first and then we can dive in however much you want. But basically what I have found, and I, I truly think that I've never heard anyone else talk about this and I'm not saying I'm special or anything. I think there was some divine intervention of me figuring this out. Um, I think that the controllers of the world, I believe them to be, you know, Luciferian, satanic, bad people that lie to us about everything and lie to us on the news. I think they intentionally hide images of dogs in all their lives. So an example would be the uh, submarine that imploded going down to look at the Titanic. I found literally it's like an underlay. So if like you're watching a news clip on it, there will be hidden dog faces like in the submarine walls. Um, I found it. Um, in the Apollo 11 mission, they literally show the earth from the Apollo and there's, there's like just a big old dog face there. So part of me thinks it's a way to, it's kind of like the revelation of the method. They're showing us, they're mocking us, but in, but why I think it's dogs is, um, cause I think the Luciferians of the world like to mock God every chance they get. And how do you mock God? You take his name and I know it's just the English version, but you take God and you flip it backwards and it's dog and you're mocking, you know, God's gift to humanity. You're mocking God all in the same way. And it's, hey, we're going to lie to your face 
and put this dog image right here and you're too blind to see it, but you're still going to believe this lie. So I believe that. And this is the, this is the crazy part. I think people can wrap their heads around that, but, um, you know, I mentioned the moon being potentially holographic in nature. I think all the stars are holographic in nature and, and I don't, and I, it's not just a crazy thought. I feel like it's been proven to me through looking at the stars, through telescopes, through Nikon cameras, and um, their dogs, their dog images in stars in every single star I've ever looked at. And what I used to think that meant potentially was that stars were angels with our dog souls in them. And Adorable. I, I like that I, one. I do. I, you know, and I. Ah, that's a children's book, man. <laughs> all dogs go to heaven. Yeah. And. They fucking uh, do. But I don't think that's it anymore. I, there's just too much coincidence with them using dogs in their mockery on the news. There's, I've found them too much and it's, I've got like, we can, I've got, uh, I can share a screen with you and show you some, yes. some, some, Audience, some cool stuff. Check out the video in the show description down there. Also, all this is played over there on Patreon for free. So if you guys want to go sign up, transcripts actually also are going on over there as well. So if you want to like read what we did here, um, you can check that out or follow along, whatever. Go check the uh, link in the show description to check out all of this dope ass shit he's about to show us right now. Um, before I pull it up real quick, I'll just say, and I'll make it the quick version. I figured this out totally. Like I literally feel like God took my face and like pointed me in a direction and was like, look, you idiot. Like, look what I'm showing you because I don't think I would have this. It's too the amount of, and it's almost like, my past 10 years or 15 years of my life were like meant to happen this way. I, I've, uh, I'm a weightlifting coach. I'm a discus coach. So I spend, I used to not as much anymore, but I used to spend hours upon hours breaking down slow motion video of people lifting weights and throwing discus and going like frame by frame by frame, analyzing, looking for one little tweak. So I'm like, I'm just in tune with studying film and seeing things that most people don't. So I think that upon literally being, I had just a weird star experience that made me explore a star just like up close because it was around the time I was figuring out flat earth and figuring out that stars aren't what we're told they are. They're not, you know, balls of gas millions of light years away. Um, so I, I, I can't take credit for it. I really think I was divinely inspired to figure this out and it sounds insane, but there are dogs and stars and I'm going to show you some evidence if you want. This is awesome. Fuck yes, we want. <laughs> Dude, right. show us the dog stars. Because serious, right? right? Uh, and you know that well, you see, and you, you that, would go into this, but I'm not going to get ahead of you here, but there's a lot of a lot of stuff, man. Yeah. And um, well, so I'll pull this one up first. Can you see it already? Oh, my God. Yeah. So, what the fuck? So literally this one, these are both stars that, you know, I was I took a video of them. They're flickering, flickering, flickering. But then when I slowed down, the star flickering and went frame by frame. Like I found this image. This one looks a little more like a fox, but I tried to get a comparable. Um, it's like a Shibu Inu hybrid. Yeah. 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 And uh, this one just happens to look almost exactly like my dog, a golden doodle. Adorable. So, but it's funny you said that. So, this is kind of what led me is I had something, it sounds stupid, but I had something on a star finding app happened to me where the, the star was just finding me and not the actual star. So not in the sky, but on the app, I'd use this app a hundred times and the star kept following wherever the cursor went, like the star was following me on the app and I never had that happen. And I was like, what is going on here? So I screen record it, go back to it a couple of days later. And I'm like, what? And it was like pulsing a little. So I zoom in and it looked like dogs were in this, screen okay so i'm still talking about the app the star in the app not the actual stars but i'm like why are there dog faces i'm like is there some sort of glitch in technology where this app is stealing pictures of my dogs and putting them in like the star in the app so i was just confused and they looked like my dogs in it so i was like maybe like there's just something weird going on i showed my wife she and she never sees anything I show her hardly, but she was like, yeah, those, it looks like there are dogs in that star. So that prompted me to figure out what star it was. And I knew based on its location, it was near Orion, that it was Cirrus. And I went and I like researched on YouTube and I found, you know, I, 
I found dozens of people's videos of Sirius, so I'm not just blindly following the first one I see, but every single actual video of a of the star Sirius through a Nikon, through a high-powered telescope, I'm finding these dog images. And that was before I even knew it was the dog star. I'm sitting at school one day. I'm like, all right, it was Sirius. Let me research Sirius. And it said the dog star. I'm like, what, what the hell is happening here? <laughs> so crazy. Um, and here, I'll pull this one up too. And um, this bigger. Wow. Okay. I see that one. Yep. Well, so let me point them out to you. So this one here, can you see my cursor? Yes. Yeah. All right, so here are, the, here are the two eyes. Like it's looking up at you. It's like this a little, one, um, what do they call those? It's like wishbone, the dog, uh, God damn it. Something terrier. Anyway, go ahead. I'll think of it. I that mean, one this one, sure. I think you just see here, this one down here, two dogs, their faces are next to each other. So here's two eyes and the nose. And oh, this I one's kind of like Holy only a half shit, face. Yes. Here's an elongated dog face. Here's the nose here. I, I, do you kind of see like it's here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I see it. Another double dog face. So two eyes here in the nose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's literally two dogs smushed against each other. Yeah. And then this one is the two eyes and the nose. And, and you know, like I've shown this to people like David Weiss. And at first he was like, well, there's such thing as pareidolia. I'm like, David, I every flicker has a dog. Like it's not that I'm spending hours looking for ones that look like every flicker of a star has these. And uh, he was like, I actually talked to him on a live call-in show of another podcast and you know, he kind of, he didn't, he definitely didn't shrug me off, but he's like, I don't discount anything now because I discounted flat earth. And now like I'll look at anything and I hang up on the, and then like 20 minutes later, he's like, you know, he's like, huh, dog. He's like, I can't get over that. He's like, what do dogs give us? And the host is like unconditional love. Yeah. And yeah, he's like, yeah. And he's like, what does God give us? And he's like unconditional love. And he's like, dog is God spelled backwards. He's like, there's something to this here. And, and that was still when I was of the belief, potentially they were angels in the stars, but I don't think that anymore, but man, there well, are dogs, dogs and stars. There are dogs in the stars. Man. Yeah. True. What a nice, you know, I gotta be honest, Tyler, this is such a nice twist. You know, what a fun twist to have dogs in the stars. Like it's, it's nice, dude. We've been talking about archons and soul traps, prison fucking planet, man. And you're talking about that all the stars are dogs and they're adorable, by the way. I see what you're talking about. It, yeah. We share the pareidolia. Um, and I don't often share what other folks point out in clouds to me. You know what I mean? I'll be like, no, it looks like this to me. And then that, that I can't unsee that, you know, or morph my perception to see the little bunny before it changes, you know, that they saw. Right, right. So, but it's interesting with yours. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're talking about. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Interesting. Yeah. Um, let me real, really quick. I don't know if I had it pulled up, but I want to just pull up one of the stars that, oh, uh, maybe. Do I you have one frame by frame where you see it turning into different that, dogs? Yeah, that's what I was trying to look for. Oh, okay. um, well, there you go. This is awesome though, dude. It, what a it cool... wouldn't send. Um, what if we go to. What about the idea that God or the rea this realm is ran by a balanced force of God, meaning that God is both Satan and God, the altruistic, the demons and the angels. It's all God, right? Nothing separate from the totality of that, which is God. So do you think that maybe even putting that in shows that it's the inversion of God, right? Because what yeah, we're shown, right. what we're shown is that God, like the God in the Bible, some people have said, and I, I want to have a, that conversation with you. I'd, I'd be honored to actually, that if you actually go through the Bible, the God in the Bible is actually the devil and it's Satan. And there's scripture that will prove it throughout, meaning that everything here is an inversion, even the Holy Scriptures and everything. And you can also see this sort of Hegelian dialect through the Bible, meaning that the Old Testament God seems very different and has changed his attitude quite a bit uh, to the New Testament God, but there's an in-between called Jesus that God supplies. So it's problem, reaction, solution, and so it's sort of this Hegelian dialect that plays out. But also, again, if you look at the work of sort of Chan Thomas and things like this, the apocalypse of Adam, that the um, the snake was actually trying to help and trying to get us to the wisdom to see that we were being bamboozled and trapped here in a way. What I mean to say is yeah. then we would say that if it is ran by a balanced God, the fact that it's spelt backwards and provides unconditional love rather than the God that slaughtered the... 10,000 babies, right? That God that's spelt properly, let's say, from our perspective, it would be more of a truth telling, right? Yeah. And, you know, like I, I do have some thoughts with that. Um, I think 
you know, there are a lot of, I think God runs this place and I do think Satan is loosed on us right now. I think we're actually living in Satan's short season, but I think that God allows that and there's got to be some sort of reason for that. And, um, you know, for me, maybe he's trying to figure out like who can be tempted still. If, if we're going towards like a new heaven and new earth and he just wants that place sinless, maybe he's just making sure that all the people that end up there are the ones that can be his true followers. So he allows Satan to have these deceptions of the globe and the big bang and evolution and aliens. And these are things in my opinion, of course. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, um, I, I see what you're talking about. I, I could give some thoughts to that. I'm just curious again, because dogs yeah. are so unconditional loving, but again, right. God, when you spell G O D and even the gods, uh, when they're uh, in Genesis, right? The plural little G and God, uh, yeah. it's just, uh, they're kind of, I, I'd like to have a conversation with them about their methodology is this all. Uh, but what I will say is, um, this is absolutely fascinating. I had a question from a mutual friend of ours, Kelly Harding, um, who mm -hmm. shout out Kelly. She's incredible. She wanted to know uh, something about the Renaissance artists and did they know about the holographic nature of this reality and were they tapped into some pretty dope paint, uh, like some higher technology paint? Because she talked about the microns, thick layers of uh, paint that's used today versus what was used back then and that it was exceptional and all these different techniques come out and you can really speak to things and they put so much symbolism into their work. So what are yeah. your thoughts on Renaissance, Renaissance, is that how you say it? That's how Texan says it, Renaissance artists uh, and what they knew about the nature of reality. Um, That's a good, deep, tough question. That's I Kelly think, did. yeah, um, awesome. her and I have connected. It, it's been awesome. Like she's one of the only people that literally comes to me with like, I found a dog in, in this and I, she showed me the dogs in the, uh, in that, uh, was it Virginia, the Vir Virginia house explosion? Yes. Yeah. And there, are, dog, there are dogs hidden all in that thing, man. Yeah. And she finds wild orbs all over the place out there and films these things yes. and puts it up. In fact, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'll link her. Uh, she just started a TikTok, So I'm, w along with your TikTok, I'm going to link hers down there as well. So you guys can check out, uh, who we're talking about here and shout out Kelly. Um, so, you know, like I, I do think we're living in a, I do think there a lot of the stuff in the night sky is holographic. I am a believer that we do live under a firmament, um, a dome of sorts. And, but I think it's different than, I think where we're living now and when we're living now is different than, um, one different than way different than what we think. I think our history is, um, a complete lie, total nonsense. A lot of that has to do in my opinion with hiding god um but i don't you know there's um there's some bible verses in tribulation that talk about when um or during in revel in revelation when tribulation happens the stars will fall from the sky so i am a believer that we were already post-trib i think jesus came back and had his thousand year millennial reign already and that is what we refer to as the dark ages because everything's inverted i think there was actually a thousand years of just beauty and bliss. And I think there is so much evidence out there from beautiful architecture and um, things that would have, you know, you can't even wrap your head around the way we're told that our history is that people with a chisel and hammer could have made these amazing structures hundreds, if not thousand years ago. Um, so I think we're living in this time post tribulation where in the Bible, it talks about Satan being loosed on the world for a great deception. And I, I think that great deception is to try to hide God. And I think that because those stars already fell, like if they want us thinking we are still in a time pre tribulation, then we need to be able to look up at the night sky and see stars. And I think the stars are there, um, as a way to continue to deceive us from knowing our true timeline and nature of this place. Um, that didn't really answer the question about the Renaissance artists, but I, I find that hard to answer that because I think probably what they were seeing is different than what we're seeing because what they were seeing may have actually been angels in the sky that were stars because there is a lot of uh, talk of stars being angels in the Book of Enoch and in uh, New Testament and things like that. So um, it's a tough question to answer based on my view of the world. 
No, it's a it's a great way that you answered it, though, uh, because they were looking at different skies. And that's what's so interesting, too, though, is because you talk about astrology and has it, how it hasn't really changed or that they can mark it based on what they call a tilt. There's a predictable angle in which it sweeps, meaning that procession of the equinoxes, right? Allegedly, again, over mm -hmm. thousands of years, which may not exist at all. Maybe it's a simulation that I woke up this morning with memories that I have this thing going on and, that you know, everything's cool. I got this cool dog talking to this cool guy. Maybe it all started just now. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but... It's interesting when you start to expand this out to um, the the higher concepts of, yes, that this is uh, all inverted. And I've heard of this post-tribulation kind of shit time that we're living in here. The question would be, my friend, is why is our consciousness here now and not in the thousand year dope brain? What did we do wrong from your opinion? Are we being punished or what is this sort of an opportunity like we were shitheads in all the lives when the thing was going down? And then now it's our opportunity to not be shitheads and to go into the yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of talk of taking the mark of the beast. I think we could be either descendants that took the mark of the beast, whatever that might be, because those were people that, you know, wouldn't have um, their reign with Christ in that thousand years. So maybe that happened and we're either descendants of those people or we're those people ourselves, you know, and just getting another chance, another crack at it to um, choose God this time. And, you know, instead of, getting a microchip in our wrist instead of getting whatever's coming neural link in the future. Maybe there is another opportunity to choose, um, you know, if down the line they're giving us the opportunity to live for 500 years or 200 years or endless because of technology. And if we're choosing that over knowing that there's a God and knowing that there's an afterlife and knowing that there's, you know, more to us than this flesh, then, uh, you know, one, it's another opportunity for us, but also two, it's another opportunity for us to fuck up again, really. And, and maybe God's like, Hey, once I can see you screw up twice, you know, no, thanks. I don't want you. Yeah. But why don't I have conscious awareness of that? You know, I don't know. I would, I would like more information is all I'm saying. Oh but yeah. I think, um, you know, I, um, when I was watching the near death experiences, one thing that resonated with me a little bit is that, um, that we have had, you know, we're spirits we're and maybe we've had multiple chances, cracks at it. And that when we're put in the womb, that like our memories are just kind of wiped and, uh, we're here to just kind of learn and have new experiences and see if we can choose God, um, over all the other nonsense. Mm. You mentioned um, Neuralink, and I know that mm -hmm. you and uh, you love Elon Musk. So talk to us <laughs> about how much you love Elon Musk and how uh, a couple of his inventions are uh, just fascinations of yours. Please, sir. Yeah, I think um, I really got into doing some rocket videos. There's um, the first one, you know, like as a person who, and I, I don't say this arrogantly, but I just, it's, to me, there's a belief or the difference between belief and knowledge. And, you know, I believe that the moon is holographic in nature. I don't know, but I know we live on a level surface and not a spinning water ball. So I don't mean to sound arrogantly, but when I say I know, um, that's just how I feel. So um, I must point out the confidence that comes with flat earthers. I just love it. All right. And I don't, yeah, I don't consider myself in any camp because I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but yeah. I love the comp that's sort of like fucking, what do y'all call them? globe tards? I, I, I just, I, I find the humor and the um, certainty uh, incredibly cool. That's all. I don't like to go down that. Like I try to, like there's so much divisiveness in it and my whole freaking life got turned upside down, become, becoming a flat earther. I literally lost handfuls of friends. My family thinks I'm crazy. My Do you wife consider and I, it lost though? Um, in, until recently. Yeah. But it's like, you know, like my best friend of the past 20 years who I never would thought would have just kind of bailed on me, bailed on me because of my beliefs. And like, yeah, the more time and the more I give it thought, I'm like, well, if you weren't going to stick by me through this anyway, then, you know, this was what was meant to happen. If you don't love me at my roundest, you can't love me at my flattest. You don't deserve yeah. me at my flattest, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, so I, I try to stay away from the insults and things like that. But anyway, back to the original question with being a flat earther and knowing we don't live on a ball with water spinning around it. Um, 
it just makes you understand that the rockets going to space space are intentionally there to deceive you they're there to propagate the lie of space and other galaxies and other planets so when I just was like, I need to like show people these things that will just help open minds to the fact that NASA's full of shit and that Elon Musk is literally the same as NASA. He's just the Tony Stark. So people can think he's cool and here to save the day. So I, I just was like, like I said, I'm good at breaking down videos. I'm good at seeing small things that other people don't see. And I, this was early on in my flat earth days. I was watching a video of one of Elon's rockets coming back down and you know how they land they go up and they land perfectly their boosters come on and they I'm like this is such nonsense like i could see it with my own eyes so i'm like i gotta find something to help me prove this to people and the very first one i find the rockets coming down and there's this little black thing right here and it does this so the rocket's coming down and it floats back up and it attaches and i'm like well that definitely wasn't a bird and i zoom in and i'm like I'm like all I'm like that's a piece of the rocket that the rocket went up and it fell off and then when they reversed the footage it's a piece of the rocket going back and attaching and that was before I was really doing stuff on TikTok or anything but I made a comment on that video and thousands of people were ripping me a new one like you're an idiot like blah 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 and but then I had the other side too like yeah good catch bro like anyone who believes this stuff is a moron so that was when I first saw the like just the like divisiveness this can can start um so i've just I've, I've tried to find every rocket video of nasa and um spacex i can and almost every single one i find some sort of anomaly or some sort of evidence that they're not what you think they are or the video is not what you think there is or um something to if you're a critical thinker Obviously, videos can be doctored, but when you're going right to the NASA video or right to, um, you know, like the source of the video, it shouldn't be doctored. Obviously, anything can be doctored on TikTok or YouTube, but when you go to the source and you find these anomalies or different things that open your mind, I think that's pretty good evidence. What about uh, Starlink? What do you think that is? Yeah, so... I saw Starlink, I was in South Carolina a few months back and I saw it with my own eyes and and I'm like, that is not, like at the time I knew satellites didn't exist the way people think they exist. Um, satellites are on giant helium balloons and they're in our atmosphere and they're circling around, they're not orbiting space. So I, I knew that already and I'm watching it and I'm like, how, I'm like, it looks like it's the exact same height as an airplane. I'm looking at it, I'm like, there's no way that's in space. Um, but I, I'm like, I don't know what it is. And, of, you know, me being of the belief of there's a lot of holographic nature to the technology we have on this world that they don't really let us know. I'm like, that is just in my mind. I was thinking it was like a plane and then like something else. And it was just like shooting a hologram into the sky just to kind of, you know, fool us into thinking there are satellites up there orbiting. And then started to dig into it and just, um, I found some pretty good evidence and then like just piecing things together. I think it's probably a giant dirigible or a giant, you know, what used to be called a blimp. And I think, um, I think there's some technology that, you know, it's probably maybe what the elites go up there in and have their disgusting pedophile parties, um, or it literally just might be up there to the seat, but I think it's a giant, probably helium filled balloon that you can travel in. And I think there's some technology that um, you can, that looks up and projects what would be above it to below it. So as it's moving, you're seeing, you're now you're seeing the stars above that you would, that it wouldn't block it out. And I, I found some good ev evidence of that where like, you're, you know, looking at the videos and the stars are like jumping. And um, so I think it's something of that nature. And I've done um, a couple TikTok videos of it that have, you know, gotten some good responses. And I, I, I definitely do not think that it is a satellite up there. And one of the ones I did is talking about the size of it. And each Starlink satellite is supposedly the size of a, a table. Okay. So there are a link of tables. 
And then I found what the distance is supposed to be. And the distance is supposed to be 350 miles from Earth. So it's the size of a table. And it's supposed to be going 17,000 miles per hour in orbit. And when you, if you look up any video, one, you're not going to see something 350 miles away that's the size of a table. I don't care how bright it is or how much it's reflecting the sun's light. Um, And then when you look at it, you're like, no, that's going, it looks like it's going the speed of a plane, which is hundreds of miles per hour. And it looks like it's as close as a plane. So if anyone's listening, check out those videos. I think uh, they do a really good job of kind of opening your mind up to Starlink. Maybe not exactly what it is, but what it is. They're awesome. I, I just like the vision you have for this place. I like the way that your mind works. I, I think it's fascinating what you're doing, man. Thank so you. So let's talk about fitness and truth and how important that is. So fitness, uh, what, what's up with the fact that it needs to be, that this is your temple and you need to take care of it, man. How's that important to you? Yeah, I, I, you know, like I wasn't awake to things for 42 years, except on the level of and we were told a whole lot of things that aren't true about nutrition and about sleep and about things like sun gazing and fasting. And I think, um, you know, that's intentional to keep us sick, to keep us needing them to need, you know, to need to rely on others to give us medicine. That's probably not making us better, but just amplifying things. And I think, um, you know, like for me, for many, many, many years, I was always a strong body and strong mind, but I didn't do a lot of soul work. And I feel like, I've tapped into getting a strong soul, but I think if you are, if you're not someone that focuses on your physical well-being, I think it's really hard to be um, strong mentally because it's just, um, you know, one, it gives you a lot of confidence. If you feel good about yourself, then, you know, obviously you're going to be able to handle things as they come at you. I think, um, it is one of the, you know, like I've always been someone that wasn't, I don't stress easy. I don't have a lot, a lot of anxiety until I came flat earth kind of flipped that on its head for a few months until I got a new grasp of what my reality is. But, um, I've always just been kind of a calm, chill person. And I don't, I don't think that's just my nature. I think it's because for the past 30 years, I've done some sort of physical training almost every day, sometimes twice a day. And it's such a good stress relief. And if you put yourself through difficult things physically, then it makes the day to day physical things like much easier to handle. So um, I I picked, you know, I kind of mentioned to you, but I picked the name fit as flat earther kind of as a joke, hoping that someone that I could convince some of the really fit people of the world, like um, I'm big into CrossFit and there's a whole CrossFit community of really just welcome, kind, health-oriented people and um, kind of did it with the intent of like, hey, maybe I can get some of these really well-known with like a million followers um, to get into Flat Earth and they could dethrone me as the fittest Flat Earther and kind of just meld the two communities together. So far, it hasn't worked too well. Anything I do where I try to mesh like a fitness, you know, like I'll do a handstand walk and like in my handstand walk, I'll say like, did you know, like, NASA had a 666 and all their numerology and the heliocentric model is like totally satanic. But like anything I do with, with message, excuse me, meshes the truth and the fitness, like it gets like a thousand views versus like 50,000 views. So I, I've steered away from it a little bit, unfortunately. Um, but that was the initial intent. I say do a yes and, you know, never tell you what to do, Bubba, but I I will empower you to be authentic. And I think you like walking by on hands while saying one of those fun facts across a stagnant camera standing on the ground would fucking be hilarious, dude. Or you walk over the camera and face it. I got one of those. Do that. Okay. Well, then maybe do that and then um, do the robot walk off. I don't know. You'll make it your own. But I don't, I I say not in either order. It's a yes and, dude. Just pepper those in. I like the personality. I I do for sure. And, you know, like, rope climbs and and like I'll say something and muscle ups and say something but and I I have fun with that I think it was a natural like I already was a loser and like to put do some like fitness posts and you know uh let people know I was training that really don't care about your training but I enjoyed that just one it kind of kept me accountable and that's kind of the fittest flat earther too is um when I dove down the rabbit hole I my training went to trash for a couple months because I was my priority was just seeking truth. 
So I was like, well, if I create this name, there's some accountability to it. I still need to like, can't show up like a fat slob and call myself the fittest <laughs> flat earther. Why not? Um, the, uh, yeah. the health ministers do, you know? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of PE teachers in my field too. That's, that's what I do in my day to day. Well, um, what uh, I, I just, you know, I'm curious and we're not going to hold you to this, man, but what, what are some predictions that you have coming up in maybe in the next uh, year, five years? What do you think 2024 is going to be like? Like, just do some Tyler Stradominus in for us, you know, and just give us a little something. What's going on in your mind there? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't I don't like to fear monger. I don't like I've I've come on a few times like there was. Um, God, what date? What date was it? Was it? uh it was maybe 10, maybe it was 10, 23, maybe because it was, there, or I can't remember. There was some date that just had a lot of uh, numerology with it. And I kind of did a post like, hey, not trying to fear monger, just kind of like keep your head on a swivel. But man, there is a lot of, a um, lot of thought, a lot of talk out there of some sort of either internet blackout or even a, um, you know, full electric blackout. So I, you know, I don't, I think I'm not a fear person, but I think it never hurts to be prepared. Um, but I, you know, I heard you talking, I was listening to one of your podcasts today and I heard you talk about it, but I've been feeling this and I've been saying it, but I feel like yeah, something big is coming. There's some sort of big change coming. And I don't know if that's, uh, you know, the fake alien project blue beam that's coming, but I think, seems like whatever is going on behind the scenes with the satanic controllers that really run this place well they're their timeline speeding up and they're hurrying things along in my opinion it it seems to be so i don't know i think people just need to keep their eyes open keep their head on a swivel and uh make sure they're spreading love because that's what matters most so you're going to be some sort of second second coming like uh third coming rather or you think this will all end at some point or do you think it's really all up to us in this lifetime to get it right for us individually and then decide where we go well it's a good question because i do you know like with my belief of being post-trib um i i do think potentially there there's going to be a a fate an opportunity or not an opportunity i think there is going to be a fake one you know like i think a lot of the stuff set up is um like literally the whole deception of living on a globe with infinite space i think you can't pull off an alien invasion unless the whole world believes that there's aliens and that unless the whole world believes we live in this infinite galaxy so i do think there is something coming with that and i don't um I don't pretend to know what it is, but I do believe that there is a spiritual war going on. And I don't know if potentially there's going to be stuff in the sky and it's spiritual in nature. And they want us to think, you know, that's ETs or aliens in the lights we're seeing and all that. So maybe that's the whole reason there's an, maybe the alien deception is simply that not an attack. Um, but I definitely think there's a spiritual war going on right now. It's funny. I did a post, and saw this weird thing. People were talking about the moon disappearing a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, like I just, I felt like it was common sense that the moon goes through phases. And for the few days, <laughs> for a few days, too. I'll check what, it too. I was like, yeah. it's new moon guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, and whether you're a flat earth or a globe believer, like I just felt like that was common sense, but it did seem like it was missing for a few extra days. So I started looking into it and I came across this weird news video of, David Copperfield talking about the, the moon and how he's going to create this illusion maybe in February where he's going to make the moon disappear. And I'm like, what, what is going on with this? So I saw that thought it was weird, but on top of it, what they pushed with that was, Hey, we're practicing this now. So if you see things in the sky, that's just us practicing this moon illusion and you should report them to hashtag or hashtag Copperfield. And right away, I'm just like, like there's something actually going on in the sky, probably spiritual warfare. And there's going to be like clash of the Titans up there or something. And there's going to be something you can see, but they want the, they're using the mainstream and David Copperfield to make the normies of the world. Just be like, Oh yeah, I heard about this. David Copperfield's practicing a moon illusion. That's all it is. 
Well, it's interesting the, the naming of that dude too, and they use names, you know, in Gematrios, I know, very yeah. important, but this one may be a little bit more on the nose with copper fields, because uh, like in the Matrix, they call those copper tops, right? We're just batteries for shit. So yeah, yeah. maybe a field of those would be oh. a copper field, right? Oh, interesting, yeah. And then you're doing hashtag copper field as if, hey, yes, I'm in with this. I'm part of the field of copper heads that you're talking about. Maybe. Oh, man. Yeah. Didn't think about that. That, that definitely could be something, though. So I don't know, like something's big coming in my opinion, but you know, could I put my finger on what it is? I don't know. Is there going to be, um, you know, an antichrist, um, potentially, I, I think I sent it to you that there, uh, this Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey thing is just like, so inorganic to me, it's unbelievable. And I think that, um, when you look past what's presented to you with Taylor Swift, like I've seen her doing like this stuff a lot and the, you know, as above, so below, like. She is controlled by the controllers to the nth degree, and they're painting her to be this just wonderful human. And I could very easily see her having some serious sway in a really negative direction. And I really think they just, you know, the whole Travis Kelsey thing is to get people that don't know who Taylor Swift is and vice versa to just all be aware. And then Travis Kelsey's pushing the, the, the jab right after that first game that they came out and like as Pfizer commercials, there's, there's something going on with that. That is more than most people realize, probably not more than you and I realize, but um, I don't know something's going on with her. I think for sure. Be aware of her and whatever she pushes on you. Damn dropping it. I love it, dude. <laughs> Tyler Hansen, all the ways to find you will be located down below, dude. Leave us with some positive, man. I'm going to give you the last word, and we are going to sign up for a million more of these things, dude, because we have got to talk more, dude. This is a blast. And we'll bring Kelly on, hopefully, for the next one, man. But yeah, leave us and some we, positive. Keep us, you know, fucking elevated. What, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, we hardly even got into the Flat Earth stuff. I would love to, um, but we can do it next time, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, get into some Flat Earth proofs and, like, Everybody, I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. I watched the movie Behind the Curve, and it for a year it made me think flat earthers were morons. I didn't realize at the time it was a mockumentary. It's in, designed to drive you away, just like all the sites you'll go to on Google and YouTube that are designed to drive you away. I highly encourage people to go check it out. Go on TikTok. This dude is awesome. He looks like a goofy looking blonde young kid, but he's just like spills truth and it gives you things you can check out yourself but his name is caleb k uh with a k caleb f e as in flat earth go spend 20 minutes on looking at his videos and have an open mind to the fact that you might live on a flat non-rotating realm and for me and this is where i'll leave you uh, the positive is that like i said i was never a spiritual guy that proved to me like a systematic evidence of proof that God is real and we are living in God's creation and he loves us and all he wants us to do is kind of give him some love back and um, I have literally felt like the presence of God like in me I can just feel that spirit when I talk to him so um, I know that to a lot of you guys that might sound crazy and it would have to me a year ago but go check out Flat Earth because it brings you to God <laughs>